Albertine Graben, Uganda's treasured oil belt, lies within the western arm of the Great Rift Valley, a unique physiographic region comprising of the rift escarpments towards the lakes Albert, Edward and George and the amorphous block of the Renzori Mountains. It is here that the country announced discovery of commercial oil finds of 300 million barrels, bringing it to the map of the natural resource countries. As a result of continuous discoveries and appraisals, Uganda's oil deposits have since expanded to 6.5 billion barrels, of which only 1.4 billion barrels are recoverable. The Albertine Graben is split into three exploration areas, one, two and three. Exploration area one is located at the northern end of Lake Albert in the Maction Falls National Park, exploration area two to the east of Lake Albert, and exploration area three south of Lake Albert in Hoima and Jikube districts. With the ongoing exit of the Anglo-Irish Talo oil, Exploration Area 1 and part of Exploration Area 2 are operated by French Total ENP, while China's Sinoc operates Exploration Area 3 and a small section of Exploration Area 2. The government has so far granted nine production licenses for 14 fuels in the exploration areas and oil companies are racing against time to reach final investment decision to embark on the construction phase and subsequently kickstart commercial oil production around 2025. At least 10 billion US dollars or 36 trillion Uganda shillings is expected in the first years when final investment decision is reached for, among others, development of the oil fuels by Total ENP and Sinoc and the 1,445 crude oil export pipeline from Hoima to Tanga Port in Tanzania. But at the same time, the country is likely to throw away a significant chunk of its earnings from the oil as a result of some unfavorable terms in foreign tax treaties, also known as double taxation agreements. A study early last month by development charity Oxfam documented that these losses are as a result of the oil companies Total and Sinoc routing the Uganda and subsidiaries in the Netherlands with which Uganda has a special tax treaty. This tax treaty, signed between Uganda and the Netherlands back in 2006, grants relief or lowers rates for corporate withholding tax, which generally apply at a 15% rate on every non-resident person who derives gross dividend payments, interest, management fees and royalty payments from Uganda. As a result, the Oxfam study showed that from one exploration area alone operated by Total, Uganda would lose an estimated 287 million US dollars or 1 trillion Uganda shillings over the 25-year time frame of the production licenses granted in that area. The 1 trillion shillings, according to the study, however, is likely a very small portion of all tax leakages for all the exploration areas. Joseph Olwen, the coordinator of finance for development program at Oxfam in Kampala, who co-authored the study, told NTV, it is safe to say Total wanted to exploit loopholes of the Dutch tax treaty. When a subsidiary based in the Netherlands, holds more than 50% shares in a subsidiary based in Uganda. For example, Total in the Netherlands holds majority shares in the upstream company that is in Uganda, Total E&P Uganda. Um, the double taxation agreement between Uganda and the Netherlands uh, mandates oh, offers an opportunity for Total to benefit from a withholding tax rate of 0%. Olwen said the loopholes have been exploited by several other multinationals over the years. Very many times multinationals uh, look out for countries, especially low developing countries like Uganda, and they try to and they look out for the uh, the different countries that, that we've signed double taxation agreements with. They get these double taxation agreements, read them, uh, analyze them, identify the gaps, and see where to structure their companies. The Netherlands ranks top as a source of foreign direct investments to Uganda, with 39% of all foreign direct investment inflows, followed by Mauritius, Kenya, Australia, UK, China, India and France, according to a 2018 Bank of Uganda private sector investment survey. 
Among the perks offered in the Uganda-Netherlands double taxation agreements include Dutch companies holding at least 50% of the capital of the Uganda-paying entity, dividend payments are exempt from any amount of withholding taxes, while Dutch companies holding less than 50% of the capital of the Ugandan-paying entity dividend payments are taxed at 5%. Also, Article 10 of the tax treaty provides that cross-border dividends paid out by a Ugandan resident company to a Dutch company that has 50% or more control of the paying entity will not be taxed in Uganda. If the same dividend payment was made from a Ugandan entity to a shareholder established in a country that has no double taxation agreements with Uganda, a 15% withholding tax rate would be levied. And the double taxation agreement was signed in order to prevent double taxation, to prevent taxing um, the same income of a taxpayer twice. But what we seem to see is that the double taxation argument is instead promoting double non-taxation. The Netherlands is the top source of foreign direct investment in Uganda. Is it by mistake? Alice Katawa, the director for legal affairs at the Petroleum Authority, the oil sector regulator, said the Dutch tax treaty affects the oil sector as it affects all other sectors where multinationals are investors. The two states give away certain taxing rights to each other for companies which are incorporated. So yes, it is true because there are certain interest rates uh, uh, like withholding taxes uh, which are reduced, you find that if a company is uh, incorporated in Uganda or that company is incorporated uh, in a country where we don't have a double tax agreement, it will pay a higher uh, rate uh, than the one which is incorporated in Netherlands and vice versa. He described the estimates of the losses made by the country by Oxfam as mere assumptions. Uh, the presumptions that were used in the Oxfam report are not correct. Um, they claim to have a copy of our um, production sharing agreements, which is not correct. I've looked at the version they have. It is definitely not uh, the version that Uganda has between Uganda and the, and the Netherlands. Uh, and therefore, I cannot comment on any of their numbers. Uh, if you look in, there are models based on assumptions, uh, based on projections and so on, um, and they do not actually reflect the uh, position on the ground. Cognizant of the loopholes in the tax treaty, Sekatawa said government has put in place several safety nets, especially in the Income Tax Act. The first safety net, in my view, for all of us, is uh, to make sure that we get this oil out of the ground. Because even 15% or 10%, if it is 10% of zero, then it is zero. So the first thing is to make sure that it is 10% of value. And we are working day and night. The second is that actually we have instruments uh, which are like the production sharing agreements, which are thoroughly, we are thoroughly negotiated. Uh, they have clauses that address some of uh, these aspects. Total ENP retains majority shareholding in Uganda's oil fields with 66.67%, while Sinoc holds 33.3%. For Total ENP, according to Oxfam, this is part of a wider network of Dutch entities. 25% or 56 of its exploration and production subsidiaries around the world are domiciled in the Netherlands. In a statement to NTV from the company's headquarters in Paris, France, Total said they do not pursue short-term or aggressive tax planning strategies and refrains from putting in place artificial tax structures. The statement reads, Total has been present in the Netherlands for more than 50 years and operates locally in all business segments of the oil and gas industry. The various affiliates incorporated by Total in the Netherlands rely on this established technical base and cannot be viewed as artificial. Separately, 
Sinok told NTV in an email that they obey the rules, laws and regulations of the host countries in areas where the company operates and their operational protocols live up to the best practices of the industry and shall continue doing so to ensure the efficient and sustainable development of the oil and gas resources in Uganda. The only concern we have is what you call treaty abuse, is where people are just registering for purposes of taking advantages of the treaty. That, that would be a serious uh, concern as an industry. So if you ask about the impact, yes, uh, the, it has an impact. We need to close the loopholes. There's a research that showed that Uganda lost around $3 billion through tax incentives and exemptions. But there are, we continue leaking money through avenues like unfair tax agreements like this one, like the Netherlands double taxes, taxation agreement. The government is aware. Moses Kagwa, the Director of Economic Affairs in the Ministry of Finance, said government has since embarked on negotiation of all tax treaties. What we are doing is to renegotiate these agreements. One, by saying that uh, for a company to benefit from a double taxation agreement, it must be taking substantive activities in that country. It must have a presence, not just registering, because a lot of companies would go to these jurisdictions or these countries where we have agreements and register there, but they are not taking much activities there. They don't have uh, really an ed office there, they don't have the majority of their operations there, but they just register in that country, pay a few uh, dollars for registration, and then they are called resident. Kagwa defended that the tax treaties are used by countries world over, but the important thing is to ensure that they are not abused. This double taxation agreement is meant to uh, alleviate the burden to the company, so that the company, for us, from our perspective, so that the companies can invest in Uganda. Otherwise, if they are paying more tax for investing in Uganda than they would pay in their home country, they would not come. Uganda maintains tax treaties with nine countries, including Netherlands, UK, Denmark, India, Italy, Zambia, South Africa, Mauritius and Norway. The tenth with Belgium is yet operational. But for a while now, these treaties, particularly with the Netherlands and Mauritius, have been panned by local civil society actors and the International Monetary Fund as not in sync with international best practices. We, we are looking at all of them to see uh, how we can review because um, most of them do have some provisions that when you sit down to think critically they may actually lead to a loss of revenue but we've started with um, at the Netherlands because we had uh, uh, low rates especially on dividends and we have also gone ahead with the, uh, with, the with Mauritius because we had also seen that some companies had uh, started uh, uh, domiciling in uh, Mauritius. No, and, and we thought it wasn't for business purposes, but it was for tax avoidance. Oxfam details that removing entirely the tax breaks provided by the tax treaties would thus allow Uganda to not only collect at least 287 million US dollars or 1 trillion Uganda shillings more in additional tax revenues, but would further collect 191 million US dollars or 714 billion Uganda shillings from total and 96 million US dollars or 358 billion Uganda shillings from CINOC. If you are going to lose just 287 million dollars from one company total, what about the tens and tens of other companies that are in the other sectors? How much are we losing? That is just the anticipation we are projecting, that it's, it shouldn't be business as usual. If someone is investing 20 billions in this country and is going to recover it in 30 years, we should be able to understand that uh, he has to look also at what you call a reasonable rate of return. But with the black oil having been in the ground for long and government now keen on starting commercial production and its much anticipated windfall, is it prudent to win some or lose some?